Okay, uh, today uh, we are going to talk about the Biostar 2 API, um, which is an API provided from Suprema that you can use with the Biostar 2. Okay, um, I will give you a quick introduction on our integration options. Um, I'm going to um, talk about the web API and give you a demonstration. Um, if you already have used our API, maybe um, this course will be very easy for you, but um, if you want to share with your customers um, who are willing to integrate their application with Biostar 2, um, then I think this can be used to introduce the API. Now, um, I'm going to talk about the integration options. Uh, currently, we have our SDK, the Biostar 2 device SDK. And then we have the Biostar 2 Web API. Um, to give you a short uh, summarize, the SDK is an SDK um, that allows you to communicate with the devices, um, but you don't have to use our software, the Biostar 2. So the Biostar 2 device SDK is used when you want to have your own server pro program for Suprema devices or when you want to directly access to the device to control and retrieve information, and when you want to have a single system and not multiple. This will apply if you have your own application already um, in market, but when you want to add the, uh, the biometrics or um, just to use our devices, um, this will be your choice to have a single um, system. Now there's uh, the Biostar 2 Web API. So um, when to use the Biostar 2 Web API is when you want to use the Biostar 2 while having a certain UI for specific features. So this will be, let's say, you want to control the devices with all the uh, features in the Biostar 2, which is quite easy to manage, but you want to have your own user interface um, integrated with your application to enroll users. And this way, if you don't mind to have the Biostar 2, and if you think using the Biostar 2 to device uh, to manage the devices, this will be your choice. Also, when you want to use the Biostar 2 mobile application with your system, then you should use the Biostar 2 web API. Um, actually, the mobile application is uh, using the web API. And it's actually using the cloud, but it can be both. Um, also, when you want to easily integrate Biostar 2 with your system, because the, the Biostar 2 web API integration will be an easier level. It's very simple. Now, you, um, I'll talk about two types of APIs today. Um, the Biostar, there's the Biostar 2 web API, and there's the Biostar 2 uh, API server, uh, which is a different concept. Um, you'll see when we go through the slides. Now about the Biostar 2 Web API, these are the uh, basic information. To use the Biostar 2 Web API, you need to use the Biostar Cloud Service. Um, this is why we call the Web API, because you, ha you have to have access on web to use the API. So you will have to first enable the cloud feature from the Biostar 2. Now, um, this cloud server is located in, uh, in Amazon Japan. Um, we do have a limitation on a uh, call per day. It, it is 100,000 API calls per day. So if you go beyond 100,000 calls on a single day, you will get <clears throat> a uh, response when, um, that your limit has been exceeded. Um, this API is a RESTful API. Um, <clears throat> if you are a developer, yes, you'll be very familiar. Uh, in my case, um, the Biostar 2 Web API was the first time that I knew what um, that I was introduced to what is uh, a RESTful API. Um, and to be honest, it will be better to look it up in the uh, in Google <clears throat> than hearing um, explanation from me. Um, there are four methods that are used in our uh, in the RESTful API. It's get, put, post, delete. A get is um, like select. Uh, put is to edit, post is create, delete is to delete. Now, the Biostar 2 Web API, we have a cloud 
And let's say this is your server. And, and this has the Biostar 2 installed here. This is the Biostar server. Now, if you are using the Biostar 2.3, you ha will have your MariaDB. And there's this program called ngrok. The ngrok, it, it, it's easily to say it's a tunneling uh, a program that will create a tunnel to your um, server having a uh, private IP. So inside the cloud, we have uh, the uh, API translator. We have the MongoDB, which uh, manages all the sessions and um, the subdomains that were registered through the uh, cloud service. And also there's the NROC. So let's say we have your user application here. If you send a re uh, request to uh, using the API, it will first send that um, request to our um, cloud server. It will go through the API translator and it will send a command through NROC, which will allow to access your server in a, a, a private network. Now from the NROC, the command that was translated goes through the Biostar server. It does what it needs to do. It, if, it, if it's um, inserting information inside the DB, it will do. If it's to get information from the DB, it will do also. Now, this is basic. This is how um, it's working through the cloud. Now it's good, of course, it's good to use, but let's say, let's go back from uh, to the beginning that I've shown you. So it means, uh, I said, you need to use a Biostar cloud service. But what if it, the case is that you don't want to use the Biostar cloud service or the site that, that the Biostar 2 is installed is in an intranet environment, which uh, doesn't have any kind of access to the outside network. Uh, for the second part, I said the cloud server is in Amazon Japan, located definitely in Japan. Let's say you are from Europe, South America, or uh, a certain country or a certain site that doesn't have enough speed, which is very slow to get the response from the Japan server. Um, let's say you want to call more than 100,000 API calls per day. In this case, I can introduce you to the Biostar 2 API server. Now, all the APIs are similar, all the same. The Biostar 2 API server is uh, a local version of the uh, web API. So this is how it works. As I said, this is the basic, um, how it looks when you're using the cloud, the web API. Now, since instead of going through the cloud, we will provide you an inst installer that will install the, uh, the API server in your local server. So you can have your own API server here. It has the API translator, it has the MongoDB to control all these sessions. Now, the user, it's the same. The user application will send the request to the API translator, but internally, it just it doesn't go need to go through the NGROC. It directly goes to the Biostar server, and from the Biostar server, it uh, access to the MariaDB. So this is the difference of the web API and the API server. This, the, the, the actual APIs used is exactly the same. It's just how you are going to use it. Now, when should we use the Biostar 2 API server? First, when you're using internet. Second, when communication to the Amazon Japan is not fast enough from your location. Three, uh, the third is when, oh, when you need um, more than 100,000 API, uh, 100, API calls to be made within uh, the same day. Fourth is when you need a customized API. Um, we are trying to add new APIs uh, when we release the new versions. Um, I believe uh, in the 2.4, there are some new APIs, a um, couple new APIs that is related to getting uh, retrieving the logs, uh, which was quite difficult with the uh, API that we provided. Uh, so 
we're trying to improve the API. Uh, and maybe in the next next version, there's going to be a, a big update on the web API. So you'll be able to um, do most of the things that are done through the BioStar 2 software. Now let's compare these two. Now, the web API needs to use BioStar Cloud. The BioStar 2 API server is available on local server. This means you can use this API, you can use this, uh, API server to create your own cloud server. If you have a cloud server, you can just install the API server on there and your customers can go through your, um, the uh, API server to get the information of the BioStar 2 server. Now, uh, the web API use, uses HTTPS. The API server uses uh, HTTP. Um, it has two additional, the web API, I mean, inside the Amazon Japan, there are two additional server for, um, to, uh, to make a backup on the failover. It's done on a failover system, so total three servers are running. Uh, in BioStar 2 API server, you'll need to create your own failover solution which is recommended to have three separate API server um, by using a uh, clustering. So when one server fails, you will have to have the other server run the uh, API server. Uh, 